Hi everyone, my name is David Ford. I am a musician and songwriter uh, from the south of England, the deep south. Hi David, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to our blog today. We really My appreciate pleasure. it. Um, well, I understand you're very fond of Philadelphia. Uh huh. I have to question though: Has the snow changed your opinion of the city, welcoming you with this much snow? It's um, it's been difficult, you know, logistically. But um, you know, I, I don't blame Philadelphia for that. Uh, apparently, Kentucky was equally uh, afflicted um, overnight. Um, no, it's, it's done nothing to dampen my enthusiasm. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's actually very beautiful um, in in the city in the snow. Particularly, it, it seems like like where we are here down down by the water. To get anywhere, you have to sort of drive through the old city um, and and on there. And yeah, all those the old cobbled streets with uh, with a blanket. It looks like a Dickensian novel. It's beautiful. So um, I'm very uh, yeah. It's done nothing to to dampen my affection. For the well, you had a really fantastic show last night. Thank you. Um, do you have any rituals or anything you do to sort of calm yourself and get into that performance space? Um, I, do you know, I don't really. For me, I, I, I find I find a stage not to be a particularly scary place to be, and which is just as well because, I mean, I don't know how many shows I've played in the last twenty years, but. Uh, you know, you, you 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 do it enough, and you you have so many things will go wrong. It's a pretty you know high risk show that I put on with with you know a lot of use of a loop machine, which which they you know can can be quite temperamental. I play a lot of instruments I don't know how to play very well, um, and and a lot of the time I like to I like to operate very close to the limit of my abilities because that's what makes it exciting for me, and hopefully that translates to an audience and that, and that excites them as well. And so consequently, in all the shows that I've done, things will go wrong all the time. You kind of, once you learn to embrace those challenges and, and, almost, and almost embrace things going wrong and the unexpected and, and come to welcome that and, and know that that's what makes a show great sometimes. But as I say, the stage ceases to be a scary place. And so, you know, I don't, for me, the thing I do to calm myself down on stage is just walk out on the damn thing and, and, and do the show. And it's, as I said, it's, it's a very, it's a very comfortable, happy place for me to be. Uh, we have a lot of followers that write into us, and a lot of them are younger and they're seeking to kind of follow their dreams. Uh huh. Do you have any advice to them to entering into the field in, in the arts, either music or acting? Or <laughs> Um, it's it's tricky and it's a very easy thing for me to say as somebody who kind of got started um, you know, I said a number of years ago when there was still um, kind of a functioning music business which which now it's sort of it's been a it's become more business than than music and certainly more more business than art um, you know, in in the music world and uh, when I when I first became a musician, it was never about having a career. It was always, it was always just, you know, playing music is so much fun, and it, it really is a, a an incredible feeling to to play music to people and have them respond as human beings, not as not as customers or consumers. But you know, if you if you write a song that really engages with somebody as a as a as a human being and and um, it makes them feel things, and and sometimes makes them feel things that they didn't even know they had inside them. And so, so for me, advice that I'd give to people would would just be, you know, if you if you love what you do, and and do the things that you love, and focus solely on that, then there's no such thing as success or failure, because, you know, if 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 you make the greatest record in the whole world, and no one ever buys it, and no one ever hears it, it's still it's still great, and, um, and and of course it can be it can be very difficult as a as an artist to walk the fine line between having a healthy sense of self worth and having a, an acceptable sense of you know self love. I suppose you know <laughs> there's it, it's a it's it's a constant sort of trade off between arrogance and crippling self doubt. And so long as you can find a, a comfortable middle ground, then I think you can be happy as a as a performer and as an artist. But I, I kind of think, for me, as soon as you 
some people are able to do it, but but for me, just thinking about career and 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 particularly like the the financial implications of being an artist, I I think that's a I think that's a, a route to very quick levels of dissatisfaction. I th I think, and again, it's easy for me to say this because because music does pay my rent and and it does you know support my humble lifestyle, but. I'd like to think that if it didn't, it, it still wouldn't change the way that I that I do it and the reasons that I do it. Um, I read a study recently that talked about what people who use swear words use them as sort of like a natural pain reliever. Okay. Do you find using them uh, is beneficial in expressing your moods or? or? I think that. Um, I mean, I enjoy I enjoy curse words. I don't think they I don't think they necessarily need to be. Um, a low form of language. I mean, obviously, you know, they are by their very nature sort of base. But um, I also think sometimes, you know, the F word is absolutely the the appropriate word to use. And I, I like, you know, I'm, I'm very into into language. And um, when I when I write songs, I always, you know, I always try to give great consideration to, to choosing exactly the, the right word for, for the job that it has to do. And sometimes, you know, that that's one of those filthy words. And, uh, and sometimes it's, the, it's exactly the right word to use. And when, when it's the right word to use, I, I have absolutely no fear in using it. Um, again, knowing that it means that my song won't get on the radio, but uh, I don't write songs to get them on the radio. I write them because, you know, I, I have a have a point to make or an idea to communicate and sometimes that's got to that's got to come with with some f-bombs in there from time to time but um yeah i don't know if it necessarily calms me down but i, th I think to I, I think to understand that 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 curse words are i can't remember who said it but someone said something quite nice that you know you should use it as an exclamation point and not as a comma like if, if everything you say is like you know f this and f that and you know you're, you're just swear words all over the shop then they, they cease to have the same sort of power and impact but um, I, I was really I was really glad to um, on my on my last album to finally get a motherfucker under my belt because it's it's a very that's a that's a, a very Americanized um, term like we in England in English vernacular we don't really we don't really have the MF uh, it, and so it's it's you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of America I really like American culture very much and you know I'm a big fan of American swearing as well like Americans never use the C word um, because it's because it's so vulgar but actually in England it's uh, it can be used almost like affectionately um, I'm not going to do it right now because it's, uh, you know, <laughs> because because I'm 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 in the United States and yeah, what have you? But uh, you know, but pe people, and it entirely depends on your company. You know, I would never I would never use vile language in the presence of Her Majesty the Queen. Um, I may in the company of the Prime Minister, but that's another matter. Music to me is something that definitely enhances your mood. And there's certain songs that you listen to. Do you have favorite songs that you listen to when you're angry, or music that you listen to that just no matter what your mood, it cheers you up? I'm a bit strange. I I think I find I find if if I want to be cheered up, then I listen to the saddest music I can possibly find, because I, I think I think th th there's a certain there's a certain beauty in in someone being able to really capture sadness in in the form of a song, in the the, the perfect selection of of lyric to match the perfect melody, and some some melodies are sad, and then if you can find exactly the right words to sort of enhance and to enrich that sadness, for, for, for me the just this, the beauty of a song that's well crafted in that in that way just fills me full of joy and the idea that, that people get it and that, that there are some people who can who can understand feelings to the point that they can actually then enunciate them in a way that other people can connect with 
yeah, so sad songs just just make me overjoyed to be alive. In a, and I don't know if that's right or if that's correct, but um, yeah, just 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 the the, the beautiful uh, capturing of, of sadness in a bottle yeah. does it for me. You mentioned last night the show, and I know that our followers would be very interested in this. That you took an acting class. I believe it was with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, but it, well, actually, it was. I was thinking about it afterwards after I said that it wasn't an acting class at all. It was actually it was a we were in the same degree course um, okay. at University of Manchester, but it was um, it was a drama degree. Um, but so, but it wasn't it wasn't sort of an acting thing. Mm-hmm. I was I was mistaken then. But it was um, it was a lot more um, I, I guess an academic. Uh, so it was looking at sort of play texts and and about theatrical production. But you know, essentially, it was a drama class um, with. That, that, I, that I I was supposed to be doing it for three years with uh, with Mr Cumberbatch but I, I dropped out after you know, six or seven months um, just because I mostly hated drama students <laughs> very sort of like unnecessarily flamboyant they were and uh, yeah just just I, I, I liked the idea of of doing drama but I didn't Think that necessarily meant you just had to be dramatic all the time being as as i've said sort of generally a bit more of a calm and reflective individual uh yeah the the, the kind of the, the drama that people had in their lives was, was not really my cup of tea and people were very very annoying um and and, and mainly I, I i'd found that i wanted to be a musician much more than i wanted to be an actor but uh but certainly for for a minute there I, uh, I I certainly wanted to follow the same route that Benedict took. Of course, you know, you, you could tell even then he was just better than everyone else. So it was uh, it was it wasn't at all surprising to a few years later sort of see him start to appear on TV and then in movies and things. Because um, yeah, you know, he was he was just clearly better than everyone else. Have any favorite comfort foods? Kind of like chocolate. I love chocolate. <laughs> But it's, for me, that's not so much a comfort food because I just, I mean, I eat a lot of chocolate. I, I love it. Um, although I, I tend not to really eat chocolate in America because American chocolate isn't very good. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why. But given, that, given that, you know, America is not a, these are not a people who shy away from unhealthy foods. Um, in, indeed, there's something of a national flair for it. But um, I, f- I find American chocolate to just be sort of almost, almost sour in taste. It doesn't have doesn't have that sort of rich, creamy, sweet deliciousness that that, uh, that we have back home. And I don't know if it's just because my, my palate is tuned to English chocolate, but um, I've, I've had Americans say the same thing, that, uh, you know, American chocolate doesn't cut it. Well, social media is a great way to interact with your fans directly and promote yourself if you're comfortable doing that. Do you have a um, platform you prefer, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, or do you prefer to just sort of Avoid most of social media. I don't really like any of it, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm sort of older than my years, and my years are advancing uh, at, a, at a terrifying rate. But um, you know, when I when I first became a, a musician, there was barely even such thing as the internet, and so now, now to find that, um, you know, it's 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 unheard of to to not, or, or you know, it's 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 borderline suicidal as a, as a musician with a, a career to think of to not be engaged in social media and I'm not particularly engaged I you know if, if there's information to impart then I will say I have a show here at this time but um, I have no interest in sharing with the world like my breakfast habits and things I just don't think it's interesting obviously our blog we use British and Irish people with calming phrases and things do you find well, any particular um, American calming um, I, th- I, I like I like um, I say I'm a big fan of America I I, I like it. I'm, I'm very fascinated by the little um, I guess the differences in in culture between you know between British and, and America um, I don't know I don't know about calming I think, uh, I mean, I, I suppose you guys do have, uh, food here is, is a, it's a very different experience here. And um, the, the sort of the, 
extravagance and, and decadence of uh, like it, in England having pancakes and syrup for breakfast is not really uh, something that we do it's you know breakfast is is usually a nutritious start to the day the the, the idea that it's like the, the start of the blowout is, uh, is is a very American thing which I totally wholeheartedly get behind nothing makes me happier than than going somewhere for breakfast and kind of realizing that I can have French toast if I want it. So um, I, I don't know if that necessarily calms me, but uh, it, it certainly certainly brings a little joy. And uh, and I think you know maybe you're more calm when you're a little joyful. It does horrible things to uh, to my otherwise svelte boyish figure, but um, you know that that's my cross to bear. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank and, you. Uh, to come back to Philadelphia soon. You try and keep me away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.